Hello, ladies and gents. Welcome to our very first, and seemingly also last artillery platoon gameplay, stylishly timing the video just on the day when patch 9.18 is being rolled out in Europe as well, giving a monster overhaul to the class. So, this might be a good memento to what artillery used to be in the hands of capable players, at least on a good day. Time to open those umbrellas. Check this one out. Alright, so here we are on Cliff in a standard battle, saying goodbye to the old style artillery in fashion. And have a look at these monstrosities here in the background. Conqueror Gun Carriage, aka the Conqueror Orbital Ion Cannon, tier 10 British self-propelled gun, accompanied today by one of the most popular and probably the most effective SPGs in the game, the M53 M55. Now, both of these machines will be driven today by really good players and excellent artillery players. If you had a look at the gun barrels, the M53 M55 has already three marks on it, and also the CGC has two rings on that barrel, so yeah, good luck enemy team. Talking about the enemy team, there is a huge imbalance there in the matchmaking, something that will probably go away with patch 9.18 as we have only a single heavy tank on our side, while the enemy team has a lot of really heavily armored foes. However, that also means that we have a lot of hit points that we can harvest. So in the beginning we are going to see if we can catch some of the enemy artillery in the beginning, there is three of them on each side. So looking for them in the most obvious spot is definitely something that's uh, reasonable. However, until we are waiting for those tracers, Let's switch quickly over to the M53 and see what we find. And we find ourselves a light tank. Well, if that's the only thing that's available for shooting, we won't say no to that. Now have a look at this aiming. You see how the shell's trajectory was obstructed by something? Well, that something was a really unfortunate T-rate French light tank. So, first shot of the game, 1100 damage secured. Now there was the Tracer, trying to go for a little bit of counter battery fire with a premium HE shell. Unfortunately though, it seems we didn't hit the mark. We might have splashed him, but we will not know that until a lot later. So, let's get back, see if we can catch any more Tracers. However, we spot something in the middle, and that's an E100 approaching. Alright, well that looks like a tasty tasty target. We will have to wait until he climbs up the hill. Oh, never mind, looks like the enemy heavies are making an aggressive push. However, that position is not artillery safe, as that Conqueror really quickly finds out. That was a flush penetrating hit with premium HE, 1950 damage. Oh my god. However, we were not the only ones noticing the enemy heavies making the advance. Our friend in the M5355 is also aiming down on this E100. Now we have little chance to get him in one shot, however we can start chipping away. <laughs> and what a chip that was, almost 900 damage in a single shot. Now, as the enemies are pretty much uh, taking over that part of the map, staying out here in the open becomes really not a healthy thing to do, so we will relocate here to the other side. We did not corner ourselves there, where the CGC is, because um, this way we can actually create a lovely crossfire. It seems the E100 didn't learn his lesson, playing so aggressively, being already focused by one of the artilleries. Well, he really was give us all the chances to get him. But back to the CGC, we are already reloaded. Now that batch at 25 TAP is way too fast for us. I'm guessing a lot of artillery players would have taken the shot anyway, especially with premium HE, trying to at least splash them. However, then they would have missed out on this nice little cluster. Oh, 
Oh, double kill. Uh, no. <laughs> and that's artillery for you. We did 57 whole damage by splashing near both of those tanks. Well, I guess we got at least over 750 assistance damage as the VK was tracked and somebody else landed a shot. So I guess we can't be overly complaining. Now, the scores are at the moment even 4 versus 4, however, there isn't really a flank where we are really strong at the moment. Our guys are trying to push in the east around the mountain, however the west is basically fallen and the enemies are controlling the middle ridge as well, so our cap is already under a lot of pressure. There, is, there goes another tracer. And there goes the enemy M53 and 55. Quite a useful kill right there, taking out one of their most dangerous artillery of the game quite early on. Alright, in the meantime, our M53 has found itself a lovely target. Now that was a really cheeky shot there. Unfortunately, it did go way wide as well. No lovely side penetration for us this time. It seems the tier 10 and the tier 9 Japanese heavies are making an aggressive push and well, oh, we have been spotted. Now that's not good news. And that's exactly why Sixth Sense is the second most important skill, even on SPGs, right after Brothers in Arms, of course. So let's quickly get out of harm's way. However, if the Type 5 is pushing this aggressively, he just gets himself in a crossfire here. And that's exactly why positioning ourselves here was such a great idea. The Type 5 can only get into cover against one side, and that means we should be able to pretty much start to chip away with impunity. The Type 5 Heavy is under fire from us, the Type 4 is under fire by the uh, M4043 from our team, he is also putting in some quite effective shells. And as these Japanese brutes advance in the open, well, that wasn't really a question if that would be a kill, was it? It's not easy to be a heavy tank in an SPG infested map, especially if you have to drive out in the open while the enemy team has some vision. It's just ridiculously difficult to avoid incoming fire. Object 704 suddenly has a really interesting idea of rushing the Type 5 Heavy. I have no idea what he thought what would be happening there. Also, he was in a position and... oh, never mind. Batch at 25 TAP. <laughs> I don't think he actually realized that we were here in this corner. So, shotgun time. But back to the Type 5. So the Object 704 rushed it in a position where nobody else could support him. However, now the Type 5 is making an approach up the ridge. And that means, with the Battle Assistant mod and the alternate view, that will be available in the game as well, uh, as from 9.18, we are able to snipe that turret behind the ridge. And that's exactly why that alternative view is so important. However, we are not the only one getting a lot of the action. M5355 gets now attention from an E50, rushing him while still being on reload. This is almost certain disaster right there. We have to take one shot, however the E50 makes a horrible mistake, overshoots us, now we are reloaded. However, as he pushes into us, we basically had no other chance but to press the button and kill both of us with a single shot. It was either that, or A50 would be ramming or shooting us to death, so... Well, that was pretty much for it for the M5355, although we are on 4 kills and we did quite a bit of damage. As for how much, I guess we will have to see that in a second. So, we are basically down in a 3 vs 2 situation. The Scorpion makes a really smart move there by scouting the ridge, as the E4 probably will still be up there somewhere. It's quite curious why that guy didn't push together with the, uh, with the heavies.
he hasn't revealed himself in a long, long time, so it's everybody's guess where he could be. Oh, never mind. There he is. He's just really, really late to the party. And again, we are in a really good crossfire situation here. The E4 completely ignores our presence, which is an um, interesting decision. And we slam dunk his side there, doing almost a thousand damage to him. However, that still means that the E4 is only down to half health. And the Scorpion, unfortunately, it's a big one there. So this is still everybody's guess. Now hopefully the Scorpion will be able to distract the guy. And he somehow misses firing on the move there. Oh, <laughs> all the stupid stuff you can see from up here sometimes. So, E4. Okay, how the hell did they both miss that point blank range? That's crazy. However, we indicate that we are ready to fire. Scorpion G moves out of the way. And we put another good shell in. And finally, the Scorpion secures the kill as well. However, just as he finally rectifies his mistakes, he, for some reason, leaves himself there out in the open and the T-92 easily splashes him to death. It's now down to the artillery to battle it out, and we are 2 versus 1 against a T-92 who can splash us around rocks easily, although we can return the favor. And an M4043 which is also a rather nifty T-rate American artillery. So, Brits versus Yankees, let's see who will win. Now we set up an ambush here, expecting the enemy artillery to make a run for our cap as they have the number advantage. With the premium HE loaded, we should have the burst radius to secure the kill if they are indeed coming down on this side. This is everybody's guess though, they could be going the long way as well. To make it less obvious, they could be splitting up. I guess we will have to see and find out. By the way, Premium HE does not have better penetration or higher damage. It has, however, a significantly larger burst radius. And whoa, never mind that. Here is the T-92 almost in our faces already. And from this distance, it was never a question if we hit that shell or not. However, if the M4043 was not on the move, an artillery shell is incoming for sure. So let's hide behind the rock. Hopefully he misses. There he goes, excellent. Now that guy has nowhere near as big of a splash as the tier 10 artilleries. So we were pretty safe behind that rock there. Alright, now it's time to finish this in an artillery 1 vs 1. And, well, as exciting as artillery 1 vs 1s go, I will speed this up a little bit until the action bits because it takes a while for the CGC to get into position. Alright, so here we are overlooking the enemy cap, trying to see if maybe the enemy artillery blind fires the typical artillery spot or our last known position, or maybe tries to make a run for it. However, as we do so, the timer ticks down and now there isn't enough time to cap, so you could make an argument that we should have maybe moved to the cap which is a little bit more risky but gives us more chances to win. But we didn't, so it's time to make a move, and hopefully artillery is still one of their favorite spots, so we can hunt them down. Come on M40, where are you? Oh, there you are, well that's a little bit unexpected, so he was actually going with the T92, or at least following him later, and now he's coming back to try to claim the kill. Now he is behind the house there, we have less than 50 seconds left at our disposal. However, he makes a slight miscalculation who he is up against, and the orbital ion cannon strikes again with some impressive splash. Wow, artillery splash damage for the win. Now I wanted to start the outro of this video with something along the lines that we probably won't see stuff like this in the future after the changes, but this very last splash kill will probably actually be happening more than ever. I guess we will have to see. What's for certain is that this was a rather impressive carry from our arty platoon, 
with 10 kills and close to 10,000 damage between them. Special thanks then to the Big Bison and Natro for the replays, and congratulations to carrying this one to victory. I hope you guys had fun watching this as well, and if you had, thanks a lot for considering giving this a like or sharing it. As for the next videos, tomorrow we will continue with another episode from our Arty Party series, still back from 9.17.1, and then over the weekend we will have some really cool carries in massively outnumbered situations from an ELC AMX and a Skoda T50. Thank you very much for watching everyone, and now if you'll excuse me, I need to check out those 9.18 changes. See you around.